good happy Sunday morning, January 24, 2021. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Sunday morning, so let's begin. First step, we're going to begin with your COVID-19 update. New Hampshire reports 10 more COVID-19 deaths. Hospitalizations decrease. Current hospitalizations drop by 20. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. works for you at Quirk Kia in Manchester, our dealership at your doorstep. This month, you can lease the new 2021 Kia Sorento LX for just $2.59 a month, and Quirk will deliver to you. Visit QuirkKiaNH.com. Here's a look at where the numbers stand in New Hampshire right now as those vaccinations get underway. There are 636 new positive cases tonight. Some of those tests date back to Thursday. That pushes the total number of cases past 61,000. The current number of cases is 5,951. That is down from yesterday. There are 10 new deaths to report tonight. 981 people have now died in the state due to the virus. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. COVID-19 in New Hampshire data, maps, and graphs. Let's take a look at that right now. And here is a look at that information for all of you right now. 61,500 and 76 number of people in New Hampshire have tested positive for COVID-19. 24,990,360 number of people in the United States have tested positive. 981 number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 229 current number of people hospitalizations for COVID-19 in New Hampshire. And 417, 382 number of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. And now let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where current cases of COVID-19 are. In Nashua, 544. Let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where total cases of COVID-19 are. Nashua, 5,437. And let's take a look at these three charts here. Let's start with the first chart here. New cases each day in New Hampshire in the purple. Daily new positive COVID-19 cases orange, new hospitalization, and red deaths. And let's take a look at this chart here, current cases in the purple, total current COVID-19 cases, and orange, current hospitalization. Let's take a look at this chart here, total cases in the purple, total positive COVID-19 cases, orange, total hospitalization, red deaths, and blue recovered. Let's take a look at this chart here, positive PCR test rate, positive PCR and antigen test rate, and daily PCR test. Let's take a look at this chart here, age group of cases, and female and male of cases. Let's take a look at this chart here, infections, hospitalizations, and deaths. And let's take a look at this chart here, deaths, percent of the population, race slash ethnicity of cases, and hospitalizations. And of mind are your common symptoms. Fever, lack of smell, cough, chill, difficult breathing, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. How it spreads, and prevention tips. And be sure to stay with the Riley King Network for the latest of your COVID-19 information. As 170,000 
in New Hampshire register for COVID-19 vaccine, officials answer frequent asked questions about the process. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Chilly mornings? Start your car right from your phone. Ford SUVs are built for weather. Lease escape for as low as $179 a month or get Explorer with zero for 72 months plus $27.50 cash. For the folks my age and older who are trying to do it, it needs to be a little bit more user-friendly. Didn't know whether it was legitimate, part of a scam or whatever. Senior citizens frustrated and questioning the legitimacy of the state's registration process for the COVID-19 vaccine. Some say the online forms are unclear and are confused by the follow-up scheduling email because it doesn't come from the state. The email comes from the CDC and the Vaccine Administration Management System, or VAMS. Because of the concerns, the state then sent out a tips email to help navigate the process. This is what the VAMS scheduling email looks like. That's a legitimate email. And that email is going to allow you to create an account in that system so that you can go ahead and take that next step of scheduling an appointment. Another common question surrounds scheduling a spouse or companion. State health officials say after you register yourself, you can check the box saying you're bringing another eligible person. When you write in their name, you'll only need to make one appointment and simply bring that person with you. People are expecting to be able to schedule both persons, um, but it's just one appointment. Not all experiences are troublesome. James and Barbara Graham registered, successfully booked their appointment for today, and already received their first doses. I was, I was, I was kind of amazed. I thought it would be longer. Now, you cannot use the same email for more than one registration. So if you register for someone else with an email and then later you go to register for yourself, you're going to need a second email or you're going to have to call 211. Also, in about a week's time, state health officials say they're going to move to a process where registration and scheduling happen at the same time. That technology just wasn't available right now. Reporting live, Jessica Moran, WMUR, News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Concord police officer accused of assaulting woman falsifying physical evidence. Brian Croft, 39, faces five finally counts. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. works for you at Quirkia in Manchester, our dealership at your doorstep. This month, you can lease the new 2021 Kia Sorento LX for just $2.59 a month, and Quirk will deliver to you. Visit QuirkiaNH.com. An anonymous call about a possible domestic violence incident triggered the investigation, which led to the arrest of 39-year-old Concord police officer Brian Croft. He is being accused of allegedly assaulting a woman on October 17th in his home, slamming a door on the woman's arm and strangling her while she was holding an infant. Court documents also say a young child attempted to intervene when this alleged incident took place. What the victim did tell us when she came forward on January 6th was that there is a history of domestic violence in the home. According to the prosecution, it took months for the victim to tell her story because she was scared for her safety and the safety of her family. They say the physical and emotional abuse has been going on for over two years. She described that this was not an isolated incident and particularly concerning to the state that this is an escalating pattern of violence. At the arraignment, Croft's attorney argued in his defense that the state is engaging in speculation. And in fact, you look at his prior criminal record, there is none. Um, he has complied with the safety plan. Um, I, I think the state is... is, is trying to paint it as something it is not. Croft is also being accused of trying to cover up the incident by getting witnesses, including the alleged victim, to conceal what happened 
and also hiding evidence, electronic equipment that may have recordings of what happened. Although the defendant doesn't have a record, the allegations here are extremely troubling, both in terms of the nature of them, but also the conduct after the incident, um, alleged conduct after the alleged incident. Croft has been placed on preventative detention without bail. The Concord Police Department also released a statement earlier saying that he is currently on leave without pay pending further review of the matter. Reporting live, Naoko Funayama, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Hassan to Biden. Return the POW slash MIA flag to the White House. Senator Maggie Hassan, Democrat from New Hampshire, and two Senate colleagues are calling on President Joe Biden to return the POW slash MIA flag to its rightful place atop the White House. On the trail is Aot inching closer to running in 2022. Former Republican Senator Kelly Aot was back in the political spotlight last week. Aot, who served as the Granite State's Attorney General before, is thinking about running again for Senator. Remote workers could get hit with taxes from two states. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. Now with your money, millions of Americans working from home could face another setback this tax season. Here's ABC's Deirdre Bolton. Tonight, for many working remotely because of COVID, a potentially nasty surprise coming at tax time. Tax bills not just from one state, but two. I would argue it's, it's really bad economics and it's cruel. Among those who may get hit, employees working from home for companies headquartered in a different state. In general, states demand income tax based on where the work gets done. That's why professional athletes pay income taxes in all the states where they play games. But several states demand tax from workers employed outside their borders because they are home to the employing companies. Now, with so many Americans working remotely, double tax bills may hit hundreds of thousands. The problem is your home state, in many cases, will not offer you credit for the work you did in another state because from their perspective, you didn't leave their state. Massachusetts adopted the same practice last spring. Employers like Rick Green with locations in five states worry. They could have done something that they, they had a relative who was sick or something and they, they, you know, they did it for all the right reasons. And then, bang, they just get hit kind of out of nowhere. Most states are facing budget shortfalls due to the slowing economy, which may inspire others to try to impose similar tax rules. Tom? Deirdre, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for this morning edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.